I bought the original Microsoft HoloLens, the $3,000 headset that was supposed to change how we see the world. Only released as a developer kit, most people never got to use one. But I'm testing it, developing for it, tearing it apart, and figuring out what really went wrong. This was Microsoft's billion dollar gamble on the future, but they didn't start with the HoloLens. It's 2005 and Microsoft just released the first next generation console, the Xbox 360. They're one year ahead of their biggest competition and have completely dominated at the 2005 gaming market. But then Nintendo dropped a bomb in the form of a Wii. We've got one. It's got these new and exciting motion controls. It completely captivated the world at the time. It released in 2006 and rapidly outsold the PS3 and Xbox 360. Microsoft realized when it comes to motion controls, they're falling behind. An employee named Alex Kipman pitched a AR headset concept in 2007, but Microsoft thought it was too early for AR. So Kipman adapted his AR vision into Project Natal. It's an experimental attempt at controller-free gaming. It has depth sensors all over, which is technology that sounded great on paper, and the demos looked amazing. Even though looking back they were obviously fake, I hadn't seen anything like this at the time. It truly looked like a glimpse into the future. It got renamed to Connect. It aimed to capture natural user input using voice, gesture, and depth sensors. Long story short, it was a huge disaster. Initial sales were massive, but the technology didn't really work. The controls were shocking, and there weren't any games you could properly use it with. I had both the first and second generation, and I can tell you they were both useless, especially when plugged into an Xbox. The Kinect didn't really work as well. There was this massive input lag when you were trying to control the character. It was so much easier to just use a controller. Motion control seemed like a complete gimmick. Microsoft Core was graphics power and online gaming, so it was a bit baffling that they were doing this. Meanwhile, Microsoft had missed the mobile computing wave. With Google Glass and strong rumors of Apple's AR and VR efforts, it pushed Microsoft to redirect their Kinect R&D into augmented reality, which is what they saw as the next major computing platform. And then after seven years of secret development in 2015, I'm incredibly excited to introduce to you Microsoft HoloLens. At the time, it was pitched as the future of computing. In 2015, it looked unbelievably advanced. There was really nothing else like it. And in 2016, for 3,000 US dollars, we got the first HoloLens. The original came with a few extra things, including a clicker, but I wasn't able to get my hands on one. The first step is to adjust the headset. Mine's actually broken. It's interesting, the uh, HTC headset has a similar strap and it's completely busted as well. So let's see if we can get it tight. Initially, I had to go through the setup, which I couldn't Record. It involved me going through basically the Windows installation queues. I connected to Wi Fi and was then forced to log into a Microsoft account. Using just pinching to navigate the menu at this stage was quite excruciating. It took a very long time to type. Okay, so this is the home screen and it gives us a basic view of all our apps. To open and close it, you just go like this. So we do have the file browser and Cortana as well as a 3D viewer and some calibration things. There's a range of apps that just seems to be basic ports from Windows. To click on things, you just pinch with your finger. The way it works is you can grab the top and then just move it around like you would in Windows. Uh, you can also click there to adjust the size or you can just say adjust and it works sometimes. In the tutorial, it was like a pointing gesture like this, but I find that to be quite painful for some reason, just doing that all day. So these are the settings. We're gonna have to go into system and then it's got a bunch of the settings we can change. I find it quite painful to change them just with this interface. I read online that you could use an Xbox controller as a clicker replacement. And while it did connect, it just didn't work. So we can open up the 3D viewer again. The voice commands are useful, but I think in general, I'd rather just pinch. So if you say adjust, adjust. The voice commands are a bit unreliable. Adjust, adjust, done, done. It makes it a lot easier to navigate the UI, but again, they probably work 70 or 80% of the time. It really reminds me of the Xbox One Connect where it just didn't really work that well. It seems to do a pretty good idea of knowing like where the wall is. I could imagine if it just fit into your glasses, you could just have these windows everywhere. The FOV is so small, so we kind of have to put things in certain areas. YouTube.com. Yeah, that was useless. We've got some news here. I don't really want to use the Internet Explorer. It's quite painful to use. But imagine you have windows set up everywhere all around your room. It'd be so good if you could interact with them with your fingers. There's also a bit of rainbowing. Uh, it's hard to describe, but there's a small rainbow effect. 
I was curious to see how well it would work outside. It wasn't really bright enough, you could just see a faint outline. It's just not meant to be used outside, that was pretty clear. It would be really cool if it did work though. As you can see from this POV, the holograms just don't go bright enough to work in the sun. Okay, so now we're in the car. It appears to be a lot better here than it was on the beach. I can actually see the holograms. The real use case I see for this headset is in the outdoors, not just being stuck in a room. So in these dark areas, it's super visible, but when you go into that light, it's almost impossible to read. Again, like having screens all over you when you're driving is almost like the perfect use case, I think. Where are my keys? Because there's no input lag, you could theoretically just drive and you wouldn't have a problem wearing the headset and you could watch videos on the side and corner. Again, so you can see the holograms there. It works a lot better in that dark area at the bottom and then up here. You can still see it, but it just doesn't work the best. Yeah, so it's not really an outdoor headset, you could say. The locking on is just incredible. Things just lock exactly into space. That's what blows me away the most. When you put something somewhere, it just stays there. It doesn't move. And you can look all around it. What happens if you get too close, it goes away. But that is just so cool. Wow. It really needs a bigger FAV. That's what's holding it back the most. Well, from the point of view of watching the hologram recording, it looks a bit blurry and low resolution. But when you're wearing the headset, it looks very high resolution and clear. Because the FOV is so much smaller, the hologram's actually tiny. It looks more like this, which as you can see is much clearer. The holograms only appear in this tiny rectangle in your whole field of view, which makes it a lot harder to use everything because you can only see a tiny portion of anything you've pinned to the wall. You end up having to move your head around more than moving your eyes like you naturally would. Okay, let's see if we can just get a hologram up. And where should I put it? We can just put it right in front of us. We could anchor it to a desk or something. There's probably no point. And then see, we can adjust the size of it, make it bigger and smaller. This looks so cool. It's so realistic, whoa. And one of the coolest things about it is when you get around them and you can have a 360 degree view of the entire hologram. I think it's still loading. We can even just pin it up here. We can maybe get it later. But it's shocking how realistic it looks, especially because I'm so used to playing VR. And in VR, you often have to have the whole headset on. But now I have an unobstructed view of reality. So it's still downloading. And then we can put it in the room and just interact with it in 3D space. I mean, this is nuts. Like, this is crazy. Especially for the year it came out. It's just so advanced. And the, the way you can multitask as well is just incredible. Okay, so we can see if we can download some apps from the Microsoft Store. I'm pretty confident this won't work. You can kind of pin these desktops like around your room and whatnot and change the size of them. Why don't we just bring it up a bit or even we could put it on this wall and it seems to automatically adjust. We can see a hologram from before still there. So let's just put it up here. It's built to just be used in a single room. So when you first walk into a space you've set up, it quickly reminds you and goes back to where all your pinned apps were. So I've pinned a few holograms around and I'm going to attempt to make some scrambled eggs. Maybe I can put a YouTube video on. Okay, so we can put that on and then YouTube's loading. I th the headset only has two gigabytes of RAM, so it is very laggy. I make an omelet eggs here and then we're going to open up my fridge and we can get some egg whites. Is YouTube still loading? We can crack two eggs. Can the menu go away, please? Thank you. Okay, now it's we can whisk up the eggs. Oh, it's loading. The logo is there now. We're getting there. Skin missing 30 grams of egg whites. I put my olive oil here. Look. Well, YouTube's still loading. Oh, the side menu's come up, it looks like. So I'm going to close all the apps we had open because it makes everything lag. And now we are cooking an omelet. YouTube's still loading. Absolutely useless. So in this kind of real world scenario of using it while I'm cooking, it's not really doing the best, is it? Why don't I, I could just watch one of my own videos. That's what I'm talking about. I gotta be honest, I thought this would work a lot better in my head. In reality, it isn't, but I got a nice flip. Using the HoloLens as sort of a mixed reality device while multitasking just isn't it. But I am watching a video, it's just, it was a bit uncomfortable. And in a lot of ways, the UI is stuck 
by having to use Windows. It seems very cool that they've got multitasking in mind from the start. I can have Windows up everywhere in the room, but the UI can be so painful to navigate, it's just not worth it. So if you go to the store and try and download an app, EA Explosive Recovery app, we won't be able to download it because Microsoft seems to have completely dropped support for the headset. Uh, the page won't even load. So painful. It's such a Microsoft software. See, so this looks like a error message from a very old version of Windows. I've tried to update it, download the new thing. It just doesn't work. It seems like the stores completely stopped working. Upon further research, this is an error message from Windows 95. It comes up because the old Microsoft store is based on an old rendering engine using Edge HTML. The new Microsoft store now uses a modern Chromium based browser to function. But but the store technically is still up, I just can't download apps. I enabled developer mode on the headset, located its IP address, entered it into my browser, and connected to the HoloLens. This gave me access to a range of system tools and features. To install apps, I searched extensively online, and found archive websites and community backups where some of the HoloLens games had been reposted. They use a .apex file extension. I sideloaded these onto the headset. When you sideload an app, I was running to this area where you try and launch it, and literally nothing happens. So this is another application that we just couldn't get working. It just crashes and freezes immediately. After some research online, I found a clue where someone mentioned using this WS app backup tool, which is designed to repackage AppX files. So I unpacked the apps, pasted that directory into the app I just downloaded, and then created an output folder. The software then ran its magic. I chose to create no password on the certificate. Now we have our certificate file, which I uploaded to the headset. I then uploaded the app to the headset again. This somehow worked. And just like that, we've managed to get an actual app to launch. Apex files were introduced in Windows 8. They were part of Microsoft's push for the universal Windows platform and the Windows Store. It seemed like they were trying to be more like Apple, having a controlled and secure app ecosystem. I would argue it was a clear attempt by Microsoft to create a monopoly on where people can install apps from. At its heart, it feels very anti-consumer. You can now see the consequences of what they've done. You now pretty much can't use a product because Microsoft dropped support for it. Lucky the modding community is around to create these tools. You can really see the lightness of the hologram and the edges isn't as much as in the middle. It's much, it can go much brighter in the center. It looks incredible. Yeah, I think we got it. This is so trippy. It's like he's really there. When you go too close, it just doesn't work. I can really feel the limitations of the headset's FOV. Definitely needs a more comfortable strap as well. But it is a development kit, so I'm sure that will get ironed out in the future. The applications for this are just massive. That's so cool. Let's go. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Yeah, so this game's incredible. I'm actually quite blown away. And you can save it here and whenever you want to replay it, you would just click on it. But while it is cool and it's a great demo, it would have been a nightmare to develop, it's not something that you would want to just play while you're at home. It's a tech demo is how I would describe it. Here's a really strange app I found that actually did work. So this is supposed to show when, when you throw a dart. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do it in real life or something, but shows you the speed of the dart. Here's another more developed game called Fragments. You essentially have to solve crimes by looking at memories in 3D space. Again, while it was a very cool tech demo, I couldn't imagine wanting to just play it. The 3D audio works very well, by the way. I was curious to see how the headset would perform in front of a mirror. It had a few glitch hiccups, but it actually performed quite well and was somewhat usable. You can see it having a few occlusion issues here. After about an hour of play, I did have a red mark and a sore head. You can see I've got a massive red mark across my head. I was playing around a bit with the device portal and it's actually quite cool. You can see a 3D view of your headset's perspective. You can also scan objects in the real world and then export them to a 3D file. It's interesting to see how the HoloLens views the world. There's statistics on the whole headset, as well as just a whole range of other things for hardcore developers to use. Now it's time to tear down the headset and maybe we can figure out how it works. You could peel off the top of the visor. It appeared to just be glued on. That revealed a few screws we could take out.
And just like that, the whole front visor just popped off. It doesn't seem to actually have a use, it's just there to protect the lenses. In my opinion, the headset looks way better without it. It's much more lightweight. I took a couple more things off and now we can get a full look at all those sensors. These are four IR laser projectors. They point upwards and downwards. It projects an IR dot pattern into the room and the IR captures how dots distort on surfaces. It then uses triangulation to build a depth map. Essentially, it can tell how far away objects are. It's pretty much directly from the Kinect. It was developed by a company called PrimeSense, which got bought out by Apple and they used it for their face ID technology. It's got these four directional grayscale cameras. These are for inside out tracking, very similar to what we see in the current Quest headsets. This camera is for recognizing the gestures you make with your hands. This is the camera that it records from as well as a color sensor. But you might be wondering how the displays actually work. Well, it's using two liquid crystal micro displays. It then uses a small Pico projector, which uses laser light to project the image from the micro display onto a waveguide. You may notice each lens filter is handling one primary color, red, green, or blue. This splits the light into those three RGB components for accurate color reproduction. Combining these gives you a full color hologram. There's so much technology happening all at the same time. And the most beautiful part of it is the input leg is so low, you don't even notice it when you're wearing the headset. The actual displays themselves are about 720p, which is about 2 2.3 million total pixels, and it only has a 30 degree field of view. There's also a lot of other parts of the headset, and there's this really good blog post explaining it all. In terms of specs, it uses this Intel Atom processor. It's 32-bit. It also has a custom-made holographic processing unit to process all the data from all the different sensors. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, one for the software and one for the headset processing unit. It's running on a heavily modified version of Windows 10 called Windows Holographic. Microsoft created the Windows Mixed Reality Toolkit, so developers could start creating apps for it. I downloaded the recommended version of Unity. I imported the tools and then changed a few project settings. Looking through the documentation, you can add voice commands and a lot of things along those lines. But just for this example, I just created some basic 3D objects I could move around my world. The app worked in the Unity player, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get the app working in 3D. I think I tried almost everything. The closest I got was just seeing the Unity screen on a window in the app. There is a way to use an external camera and be able to see the holograms on it. But unfortunately, it looks like you need a second HoloLens to do this. Plus, I'm sure it's a nightmare to set up as well. One of the biggest problems I'm finding is the difference between the HoloLens 1 and 2. They have completely different CPU architectures, so the one's 32-bit Intel-based and the next one they made is ARM-based. Things that work on the one won't work on the two. They're just not compatible with each other. So almost everything you find is for the HoloLens 2. It just makes developing apps for an absolute nightmare. Sometimes that can be part of the fun, but I really tried everything and I just couldn't get the app working. There's so many different versions of every software you're supposed to use for the HoloLens 1, the whole thing is just extremely confusing. But it was fun playing around with it. For its time, the technology was incredible, and $3,000 isn't unreasonable for something so advanced. But the flaws are hard to ignore. It was too expensive, too limited, and just too early. The HoloLens 1 never broke through, and it never found a market. Still, it laid the groundwork for what came next. More on that in another video. As always, thanks for watching.